Alright guys, let's test the Dolphin emulator on the Switch while the Switch is running Android. Um, first we're going to try something that I know works. That's The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess. It's going to show you how well it works and a couple of drawbacks in some areas. As you can see, it's going a little slower as it gets into the higher field. So for that, what we can do is we can take the emulated CPU speed and just drop it. I've done to about no less than 40%. Still not playing perfect, but it's a little bit better. Just a little. I'm gonna go right. I think I've showed you enough of this game. And we're gonna go to another big surprising uh, moment for me. Resident Evil 4. Resident Evil 4 plays like a dream. For the most part.
was wondering if you might recognize the girl in this photograph. ¿Qué carajo estás haciendo aquí? ¡Lórgate, cabrón! Sorry to apologize. Well, that's enough of that game. It plays pretty good. But not every Dolphin, uh, not every GameCube game can run well on the Dolphin emulator. We're gonna, I'm going to show you that right now by playing Spider-Man 2. And I'm just going to... Um, fuck Activision, by the way. Uh, just going to hit the load state. This is about the best you're gonna get with Spider-Man 2 on the Switch. What is the uh, CPU at? 50%? Yeah. Try it at 40 just to see. I'm going to show you another game that kind of works, but not fully. Need for Speed 2 Underground.
kind of plays, but it looks like crap, and it kind of has... There's just something about it that makes it feel like it's not being played fully. Uh, at full speed or something. Here's Metroid Prime 2 Echoes. I'm just going to go to the late load state. Right now I think it's at 80%, but it plays best when it's at uh, 40%, I found out. The sound and audio might not be fully synced up when you put it at 40%, but it makes it a lot more playable. Another thing about this game is if you wanted to scan something, like say, uh, oh, this cargo crate here, you can't really unless you go into settings and you turn off store EFB copies to textures only. You have to turn that off, which makes the game play slower, but allows you to scan. It's not like this in the first Metroid Prime when you're emulating it, but it is for 2 and even Metroid Prime 3, but you can't really emulate Wii games on this. Um, but it's, uh, for the most part, playable. And, uh, that's about the best you're going to get this. Now, the absolute worst game to play on the Dolphin emulator is Star Wars Rogue Squadron 2. Even the best computers have troubles emulating this at full speed without any hiccups. Um, even if I take it down to about 40%, What the fuck? Okay, so it's not one to play, uh, this version of the game. I did get it to run before, and the entire game was about that slow. Maybe a little faster, but not very much. For the overall settings, um, that I have to get it to play this smooth. Um... Yeah, I've got the override emulator, yeah, emulator CPU clock speed, and I usually have it anywhere between 80 to 40 percent. I have, I very rarely take it up to 100 percent, and if you take it below 50 to 40 percent, uh, it'll start acting like really bad. The games won't play like the Switch will be able to emulate it better, but the actual emulated CPU won't be able to keep up with the game and it'll it'll have many of the same problems as if you try to turn it up to like 300% or something the speed limit sometimes I'll try to take this thing up to about uh, 200% but I rarely do that only on like games that run really slow I just try to see if it helps um, I often I also have audio stretching this way the audio um, doesn't sound so laggy or skippy. Okay. For the graphic settings, of course, I have it on uh, Vulcan. Um, compile shaders before starting. That usually helps a little bit. Uh, back end multi threading is off. Aspect ratios auto. Display scale one hundred percent. Enhancements, internal resolution is the same. Uh, no anti-aliasing, which makes the game look a little bit bad, but who cares. Um, scopic filtering is off. Plus processing is off, although that doesn't affect the performance too much, having it on. Scaled EFB copy, no. Basically anything that says it'll um, 
reduce the performance of the game I have off you know as opposed to trying to make it look good um you can more or less see everything here that I have selected I think and hacks um skip BFB access to CPU yeah pretty much yeah so that's uh those are all my overall settings i hope you enjoyed and i hope you find it helpful now let's hope that the devs can find a way to make the uh joysticks and the joy cons actual analogs instead of being basically fancy d-pads with how they function and if you're looking for the best uh ps1 emulator fpsc it's like three bucks but because of this emulator, this is the only one that actually allows me to use a uh, to play Ape Escape while holding up on the uh, right joystick to actually, you know, make the net go forward. AM2R works like a dream. Grand Theft Auto, all the controls for it have been fixed. Um, yeah. And the only N64 game that has trouble is actually emulating. Is Shadows of the Empire. That's usually if I'm like in the snow speeder sort of circling the at, -AT. Other than that, I've had no problems with uh, emulating that game. And with the PSP emulator, even um, th there's no game that has any kind of lag in it. Even the ones that are hard to um, emulate. So, um, peace.